In my performance tuning consulting engagements, I have rarely come across SQL Server deployments where there are no redundant indexes, no missing indexes, no unused indexes, and there are no opportunities for index consolidation. Yes, I'm specifically talking about these four tuning opportunities with indexes, and there is a lot of work to do. Every SQL Server deployment will have tons, dozens of such opportunities. So I'm going to call this out again. I'm talking about missing indexes, unused indexes, redundant indexes, and index consolidation. If you're watching this uh, video on our YouTube channel, search in our YouTube channel on these keywords and you are going to find multiple videos. If you're watching this on sqlmaestros.com video lobby, again, use the search feature and search on these keywords and there will be a couple of videos on these four items. Okay, so this video is going to be about redundant indexes. So what typically happens is when you create indexes, you are generally trying to help a specific query. Let's say there is a slow running query and you're trying to tune that query. There are different things that you will do when you're tuning a query. You will consider rewriting the query using different T-SQL features. You look at the execution plan and try to find tuning opportunities out there. You're looking at weight statistics, etc. One of the things that you are going to do is look at index tuning opportunities. And there, what happens is if you land up identifying that there is a missing index or there could be potentially a better index that you could create that may help the searching the searching mechanism of sql server make it faster by adding that index you will land up creating that index what happens is over a period of time, lot of such indexes creep into the system. So you are going to create one index for query one, then you create another index for query two, then you create a third index for another workload. What happens uh, gradually in due course of time, lot of indexes get created and they creep inside the systems. Uh, many of such indexes are redundant. They're kind of duplicates. They're very similar in nature in terms of their index keys or the combination of index keys and columns, or uh, they're similar in terms of like the order of columns when you talk about the index keys. Redundancy will have multiple definitions. They may not be exactly 100% duplicate, but as I said, you are going to look at the common keys, common index keys, and you're going to look at the included columns. Now, this is a gradual process. Just like you add indexes gradually, you will have to remove these redundant indexes gradually. And of course, you have to test your workloads because you don't want to drop an index and then suddenly you see a, a workload has just slowed down considerably. You don't want to really impact the performance of that query. Okay, so of course, this is an ongoing analysis that you will have to do uh, almost every week. So let's look at a simple example of redundant indexes here. And of course, scripts are going to be really useful. You need to have your scripts and tools ready so that you run them, you identify any redundancy, and then you take corrective action. We are going to look at this tables, person dot person in AdventureWorks database. Now, if I just show you the attributes in person dot person, just for the purpose of demo here, I'm going to play with a few columns like first name, middle name, and last name here. These are the three columns. Let us first see what are the indexes that are currently available on this table. So right now, I can see that there are, there's only one index that deals with these three columns, which is last name, first name, and middle name. So this is the index. It is a non-clustered index and these are the index keys, last name, first name and middle name. SP help index does not tell me if there are any attributes, if there are any columns in the included keyword. I mean, if they're included as part of the index, SP help index does not tell me that. I'm just assuming that this is a composite, a multi-column index and these, this is the order of columns, last name, first name and middle name. 
now i am going to create another index i will create an index called idx2 with last name and first name purposely doing it just to convey my message let's go and create another redundant indexes i would have loved if sql server would have given some kind of warning in the messages tab that a similar index exists um, I mean, I'm not asking for any any prompt. Do you really want to create that index? But some kind of warning would have been helpful. But uh, unfortunately, here in Management Studio, as a, as the client for the database engine, does not show any warning. Which means you can actually go and create many indexes that are hundred percent duplicate. Okay, and I'm just going to demonstrate that to you. What I'm trying to say is, if I create this index IDX2, let's go and create this. It gets created. Let's copy this and create another index called IDX3 with exactly the same definition, which is last name and first name. And SQL Server will happily create that without any warning. A warning would have helped here. Anyway, let's go and uh, just drop this index IDX3. Otherwise, it's going to skew our demonstration. Let's drop this one. So what you have is now IDX2 with last name and first name. Let's look at SP help index and you will see that here is our newly created index IDX2, last name, first name. Now, you know that last name and first name here is a redundant index. We already have an index on last name, first name and middle name. So any query that would have probably, uh, any query that would be helped by IDX2 can actually be helped by this one. So you may want to remove this or the other way around. Uh, but first, let's go and check the redundancy. So we have the stored procedure here. This is part of our health check, uh, health check script. Uh, check redundant indexes. Okay, so I am going to run this stored procedure. Let's go and execute this. And it gives me the name of the first index, index one, and the name of the second index, index two here. So you can see these two indexes are potentially redundant. I mean, they're similar to each other. Which one is redundant and which one is not? That is a decision which you will have to take. It gives you the similar indexes. So this one and this one are similar. Uh, the one that was created by the system, you know, the Adventure Works database. This is the one that we created. Now it gives us the keys. So index one has these keys, last name, first name, and middle name. And index two has these keys, last name and first name. So here you are able to compare, okay, which index do you really want to keep? You want to keep this one or this one. Now, as a developer, DBA, SQL Server practitioner, custodian, um, you know, site reliability engineer, whatever your role is, end of the day, you're just dealing with SQL Server. You got to take a call as to, uh, you know, your workloads and your queries and you know which one you want to keep. Okay, so you are able to identify the redundancy here. Things get a little tricky when you have to deal with included columns. I mean, when you look just when you are just looking at the index keys definition, I still feel that it's relatively uh, easier to identify redundancy. But the moment you have more similar indexes that creep into the system with included columns, things get a little tricky. What we will do is create another index. Let's do that. And this time, let's call it index three. And this time we are going to put um, included uh, columns. So I'm just going to say included and let's uh, put in middle name. Now middle name is not part of the index definition. It's there in the included keyword. Oops, sorry, not included. This should be include. Okay, so let's go and uh, create this now. Now let's see what our script tells us. I am expecting that the script is now going to give us all three indexes and an opportunity to compare all three of them. Let's do that. Let's go and execute this. And yes, it gives us so I can identify, okay, I've got this one, I've got index two, and I've got index three as a comparison here. So looks like the first one and the second one is being compared with the third one. So the first one with the second one and the second one with the third one. The script also compares the first one with the third one, okay? 
Either way, whichever, I mean, you really don't want all through comparisons. End of the day, you just want to know, okay, I have three indexes and what are the keys and included uh, columns. Now, what is interesting to note here is if you look at IDX3, IDX3 gets listed down as part of index 2, which means it it is compared to some other index. And for IDX3, here if you look at index 2 keys, last name and first name, and then you can see the included column here. Now you know that, okay, apart from the first index and the second index, which do not have any included columns, I have a potentially third index, which has the same index key definition, and additionally has middle name as part of the included keyword. Now again, before you take a call as to which one you wish to drop, which one you want to keep, you have to look at the query, you have to look at the workload. Uh, is middle name part of your predicates or is middle name um, just part of the select list? If your queries or workloads have middle name just part of your select, select list and is not there in the where clauses, probably index 3 may be a better choice over index 2 and index 1. Okay, so once you know your indexing architecture and you know how indexes work, you can take such calls. All right, so this video was about identifying redundant indexes. I know what you're thinking. You want this script, rightly so. Visit sqlmaestros.com, just become a member, then jump over to the resources section and you can download this script and all of the scripts that I use in my videos. If you have any trouble, any issues, and if you have any questions, you can always write to our team members at contact at sqlmaestros.com. I repeat the email. It is contact at sqlmaestros.com. All right, friends, continue to learn from our channel and from SQL Maestros video lobby. Each week we come out with a lot of content. If you are someone who is looking for an extensive performance tuning masterclass and you want to upgrade your skills, I mean, you are someone who has a few years of experience, but you really want to dive deep into SQL Server architecture, internals, performance tuning, query optimization, root cause analysis, etc. Look for the live masterclass. Visit sqlmaestros.com, check our live masterclass. We just do one class each year, which is our most popular class, which we have been doing over last about 15 years. And of course, with each class, we upgrade the content and include new features of SQL Server. That is the one class that you need. Very comprehensive, full coverage from start to end and totally practical with real world scenarios. All that is available on sqlmaestros.com. I will see you soon in another video. Till then, happy SQL.